Jews facing a double standard yet again. I'm Brian Lilly with the Rebel.media. Calls for punching Zionists by student leaders. Claims that it was Zionists that carried out the Quebec City mosque attack. Even prayers for the killing of Jews. These are just some examples of the open hatred towards Jews that we've learned of in Canada in the past week or so. Does this make the national news? Well, sometimes stories like this do, but other times they're pushed down the media food chain, covered mostly locally or in community publications like CIJ News. We definitely don't hear anchors across the country reading out the story in the same concerned tone as if other groups had faced a threat. Let's start with the punch a Zionist student leader at McGill. 22-year-old Igor Sadikov, a member of the Student Society of McGill University, last week posted a tweet that said, punch a Zionist today. Now, is this an act of anti-Semitism? Well, we do know that for well over a decade, as it's become less and less fashionable to be allowed to openly hate Jews in public, those that want to denounce Jews to denounce Israel, well, they switched to using Zionist or Zionism, the belief in a, a Jewish homeland. There was an attempt to have Sadikov removed from the student society, an attempt that failed after the majority voted to support keeping him on, a 5-4 to four vote. But according to reports, the meeting turned into a big discussion of Zionism and a push by Palestinian activists to have any student with Zionist views barred from serving on the student society body. Now, Sadikov apologized for the tweet, but check out this report from Canadian Jewish News. B'nai B'rith says that Sadikov appears unrepentant, noting that in his apology on his Facebook page, he liked a comment from someone who wrote, I can punch one for you if your position does not allow you. Okay, it's time to play that game. What, what would happen if this were a student leader at a major university in a major city in Canada calling for violence against Muslims? The nonstop coverage would be absolutely deafening. I'm not going to say that no one covered this story in the mainstream media. They did. I'm just saying that the level of coverage was far different, much less coverage because it was a threat of violence aimed at Jews. Have you heard about the anti-Semitic flyers on the campus of the University of Western Ontario? Probably not. Not surprisingly, there's no link to Donald Trump or alt-right or insert your favorite boogeyman here. Unlike the stories we heard and saw over and over again about flyers, uh, posters targeting Muslim minorities after Trump's election, stories with these crazy flyers with no communism, no gays, no Muslims, uh, that imagery, those stories were carried everywhere. But what if the flyers at Western that say Zionists in Canada are terrorists? Here's what the flyer from a person or group calling themselves the Canadian National Independence Party says. After pointing out the obvious fact that Canada and Israel are not the same place, the flyer says in part, We hereby announce that our party, the Canadian Independence Party, condemns the assassination of the Muslims in Quebec uh, Mosque by Jewish terrorists who were trained by Israel Zionists. We also condemn the assassination of Muslims in Palestine by Jewish Zionist terrorists in Israel. We, we request that all Zionists in Canada be tried as terrorists and all members be put in jail. This is pretty bizarre and strong stuff. Have you seen this covered anywhere? The Gazette, the student paper on campus, they've covered it. CIJ News has and now us. Not much else. No Peter Mansbridge looking through the camera lens and warning of a, a spreading of hate across the land. And we won't hear endless stories of the Quebec imam that called for Allah to, quote, destroy the accursed Jews or who calls for them to be killed one by one to make their children orphans, their women widows. Have you heard about this? Because the videos are on YouTube. The stories have been out there for a while. And groups like the Center for Israel and Jewish Affairs have condemned it. Here's what Rabbi Ruben Pupko said in a, in a statement. We condemn these explicit calls for the death of Jews in the strongest possible terms. Such hateful, violent rhetoric has no place in our democracy or in any religion. We have brought this to the attention of the police and are in the process of filing a formal complaint as we believe these declarations may be a violation of the criminal code. We urge government and civil society leaders of all faiths to join us in condemning these comments as abhorrent and unacceptable. That was on February 13th, on Monday. Has this story been in your news feed nonstop? Has it been on every radio and TV newscast you've heard? No. This story isn't getting the coverage it deserves. We've got a big debate in this country right now over a motion in the House of Commons to combat Islamophobia. Uh, let me give you a free tip. You want to combat Islamophobia, defined or not? You want to make sure that Canadians don't start harboring anti-Muslim feelings? Then here's my free tip to politicians and 
folks in the media alike. Stop treating every possible slight against Muslims as breaking news that must be shared, that must be denounced, that must be told and retold again and again and again and again while treating other threats, other groups differently. Take any of the three stories I've just told you, make the victims or the targets Muslims instead of Jews, and we would be having story after story about the wave of anti-Muslim sentiment in Canada. But when it's Jews that are the targets, it is virtually cr crickets out there. Canadians are fair-minded people. They don't like anyone getting special treatment. They really don't like double standards. Well, right now, as any Jew or supporter of Israel can tell you, there is a double standard. And allowing that to continue just simply won't lead to good things. If you liked the video you just watched, make sure you never miss a Rebel video again. Click here to subscribe.